all i need to ask some basic question what is meant by an embedded system have you heard something about that or have you seen some embedded devices around you in your day to day life can you tell some examples mobile phone is it an embedded device motherboard some more lower level for example your pc whether it is an embedded system can you tell it as an embedded device or your laptop <laughs> then your uh, whether your dvd player is an embedded system or your washing machine so from all these things how how can you define an embedded system or in no need a formal definition what are the features of an embedded device you had seen some example no? your dvd player mobile phone laptop it is not an embedded device that why it is like that we will see later so what is meant by an embedded device the embedded system is something that can be programmed so in that device two parts will be there major one software part will be there one hardware part will be there right so that software part is known as firmware one software part will be there some hardware part will be there so that we can program that hardware and that software is known as firmware so there is meant by an embedded device so for example you are take your uh, fully automatic washing machine whether that washing machine can be reprogrammed for example you are having certain functionality there and one of the most important function of embedded system is that it is used for certain general purpose application only general purpose application it cannot be used for i uh, know it is it is used for specific purpose application only it cannot be used for general purpose processing that is why laptop is not an embedded device because it can be used for general processing application so many other things but your embedded device means it is used for certain specific purpose application only so your washing machine itself it can be used for your doing the washing process so whether it is an reprogrammable system so whether reprogrammability is one of the feature of embedded device that depends on the device certain device can be reprogrammed certain device cannot be reprogrammed one time programmable device otps so your washing machine is a device like that washing machine dvd player etc so there what is, what they will do they will fuse the program into the controller once and they will fix it in the system after that if there is any problem they will replace that chip it is one time program only we cannot reprogram it so that is a something regarding embedded system so these are some of the embedded devices which you are seeing in your day to day life right no? your communication systems washing machine consumer electronics household automobile etc after this nowadays we are more concentrated on your automobile embedded devices so nowadays in most of the automobile there are greater than 80 processors in one automobile that is for fuel injection your chassis domain so many other things body domain like that so there are so many processors embedded into this automobile and there will be so many electronic control unit which will be taking care of all these things so that is one of the most important embedded system which you are seeing now in your day to day life so this is a uh, small definition regarding your embedded system i told you this is a system in which software is embedded into a hardware and that software is known as firmware so the heart of the system is a programmable device sometimes it can be reprogrammed sometimes it may not be reprogrammed only one time programmable device 
So this is a, I told you this is one of the most important embedded device, embedded device which you are seeing now. So many and in the same automobile we are having I told you more than 80 processors are there and depending upon the functionality of the processor it is some, some process will be having 4 bit some of them will be having 16 bit some of them will be having 30 bit or 64 bit and higher end processors will be used for your critical application such as fuel induction fuel injection have you heard about abs abs esp etc so these are the most critical safety measures which we had included in your automobile that means if you are missing certain deadline you will be finished so we will see one or two videos which will show how critical is an embedded system example your abs itself will show with dbs from bosch the need to be mobile is rising traffic is growing ever heavier critical traffic scenarios are increasing with unclear traffic situations suddenly occurring traffic jams or obstacles sometimes only full braking can save the situation full brakes in critical situations or when braking on slippery roadways the wheels can lock the vehicle can no longer react to the driver's steering because the locked wheels can no longer convey the optimum braking power and necessary turning force to the street it hence becomes nearly impossible to evade an obstacle ABS, the anti-lock braking system from Bosch, prevents locking of the wheels. ABS ensures that the vehicle remains steerable and stable while fully applying the brakes. The ABS control unit also continuously monitors all wheels by means of wheel speed sensors. Should the system recognize that a wheel is locked, ABS immediately intervenes and systematically regulates braking pressure. ABS can regulate each individual wheel within milliseconds. With the electronic anti-lock braking system, a sort of electronic intermittent braking, ABS achieves stability and steerability with the shortest possible braking distance. Let's have a look at the ABS benefits in practice. Ding machine. This is a sojourner which we had seen in that video. So here you can see when uh, when the, when that rocket is has has taken off from the earth, then after taking off from the earth, complete control of that rocket as well as this sojourner is taken care of by certain embedded devices. Because you you can see that whenever you are going out of the space, communication becomes very costly as well as very difficult. So all these divide, devices has been taken care to automatically autom uh, move through certain terrains and do all the functionalities. All that has been programmed to this. That means this will come under the category of automated guided vehicle. Then your GPS receivers. So why do you go for this embedded devices other than your conventional devices? What are the reasons? So these are some of the reasons. First reason is that reduce the number of components. That is the first and foremost reason. Why? Because you are using a simple controller or a microprocessor which can do functionality of millions of transistors. So all your gates, your logic circuits, flip flops, all these things can be removed. So whenever one component has been removed from your circuit, what is the advantage? Space, uh, space is one important aspect. Your complexity will reduce because whenever you are having one wire connection like this, 
it is complex. So, try to reduce the number of external connections whenever you are building some hardware. So, when you are using an embedded device, you are removing all the other hardwares. So, all the connections will also be removed. That means, your circuit become much more simpler and you can also make it compact. That is a reduced size and since you are removing all the other components, cost also will be reduced to a certain extent because sometimes more costlier embedded device will be costing greater than the collection of hardware. So, so, to certain extent it will reduce the cost. Second one reduced power consumption because number of components are reduced, power consumption will also come down. Then easier upgradation, troubleshooting is easier and it is best suited for specific controlling application. Because other than any other circuit, this embedded device we can program it according to the particular application, more in a more optimized fashion and all, we can program like that. But if you are, if you want to do the same functionality with your logic gates and all, it will be much more complex. And your IC is only this much, but if you are going to implement that same IC or your microcontroller using a digital circuit, it will be somewhat bigger. So next what, what you need to know, what is the difference between a microprocessor and a controller? Because your heart of an embedded device is known as a microprocessor or a microcontroller. That is your heart. That is controlling all the complete working of the system is controlled by that heart. And all the other chips are only supplementing that heart, like your lungs, etc. So this is the brain. So what is the basic difference between a microprocessor and a controller? From the name itself, we can get microprocessor means it is used for certain controlling, certain processing application, microprocessor. That means general purpose processing application. There you will be using your microprocessor. Can you tell some example for microprocessor? Your Pentium or Core i5, then your 8085, 8086, all, all of this comes under category microprocessor because it can be used for general purpose processing application and in those in that cases external support hardware is very much required because in your microprocessor only limited amount of memory and one CPU will be present. All the other peripherals you need to attach into that system. So for example, you are going to control temperature of this room you are going to design a system. So, what, first of all what you should do? You will take one temperature sensor and generally sensors are giving analog output that everybody is knowing, no? most of the sensors give analog output and I need to connect this sensor to my microprocessor where you are going to execute my program that is when the temperature is going below certain limit, we need to switch on some heating device when the temperature is going above certain limit, we need to switch on some cooling system. So, all these decision, decisions are taken by your microprocessor or controller. But since your sensing unit is giving analog input, analog output, how we will interface this sensor to your microcontroller? The controller is working on digital circuits because it is built up of millions of transistors, MOSFET, etc. So, how we will interface? There we need to have something known as analog to digital converter, ADC. So, ADC is one of the peripheral for interfacing this, but in a microprocessor this ADC is not present. So, what you will do? You will interface one external ADC chip. Again the circuit is becoming complex. Then after performing some calculation, you need to store the values of temperature somewhere. So, how we will do? you need to add some more memory device. Again, circuit is becoming complex. Then after taking the decision, what you should do? You should control some actuators such as your uh, heater or cooling system, etc. For that, 
some driving circuit should be there again it is becoming complex that is why if you are using microprocessor you need to have so many external support hardware in order to avoid all this disadvantage they had found out something known as microcontroller so there you can see there will be one microprocessing unit will be there that is your cpu and in addition to that cpu you are having all this a to d converter ram program memory all the peripherals are attached to that microprocessor and they made into a small chip that is nothing but your microcontroller so there only less support hardware requirement is there because most of the devices most of the peripherals are inside that small chip itself that is why we are going for microcontrollers so pic comes under the category of microcontroller any, any other uh, controller can you tell at mega 8 and all have you heard about or 8051 have you heard so 8051 your at mega 8 or, or avr microcontrollers there are so many arm uh, controllers based on arm architecture so so many controllers are there out of that one is your pic so what is the full form of that pic it is nothing but peripheral interface controller because in the olden days while it was in the development phase this chip was developed for interfacing certain peripherals to the microprocessor or some other device that is why it was given the name peripheral interface controller after that it uh, so many developments had happened and it was developed into a complete full fledged microprocessor microcontroller at that name it can also be known as programmable interface controller so both are same peripheral interface controller or programmable interface controller both are same <coughs> then these are the some of the various controllers you had heard about there are different series of controllers 8 bit 16 bit 32 bit so what is meant by an 8 bit controller what decides that controller is an 8 bit or 16 bit based on what you are telling as you know your 8085 is 8086 is so on what basis you are telling that that is how because in most of the processor or controller there will be two data path which are the two one path is used for for the movement of data one path is used for movement of address or program for program bus and data bus is there or address bus and data bus is there and based on the width of the data bus you are telling it has 8 bit or 16 bit so you are going to study pic 16 f877a so how much bit it will, it will be that we will see later so if if the bus width the data bus width is 8 bit so what is meant by this bus width how many bits it can transfer simultaneously at a time parallelly so 8 bit data bus means it can transfer 8 bit of data parallelly eight lines will be there collection of eight lines is known as bus collection of more than one lines is known as a bus here you are having eight bit eight lines so it is known as an eight bit microcontroller or a processor so based on the data bus width you are dividing into eight bit 16 bit and 32 bit so 8 bit controllers are all these things so who is manufacturing this pic microcontroller any other manufacturers are there for example you had you told no 80 mega or 8051 take the example 8051 which company is manufacturing that atmel intel is 8051 that core is manufactured by intel but the microcontroller that whole unit is manufactured by greater than 150 companies they will buy the core from intel they will attach their own peripheral and they will make, make one controller so so many companies are making this 8051 but pick 
is manufactured by only one company microchip right then your motorola 68 hc 16 bit controllers are you are now you will be studying only pic 16 series there is something known as pic 18 24 32 etc that will be having more data bus width that will be 16 bit 24 bit 32 bit etc because your pic is available in different families from 8 bit to 64 bit it is available then 32 bit controllers most important processor is arm arm processor so arm is not at all a controller it is only a processor so what the comp here in the case of arm also there are so many companies which is manufacturing controller with this arm processor they will buy the ip core from that arm and they will attach their own device and they will make the, make one controller example is lpc2148 that is manufactured by nxp semiconductors so arm company will not manufacture any chips they will only sell the ip core to the other companies who are manufacturing the chip so what do you mean by an ip core have you heard about VL, F, vsdl have you heard about this language vsdl fpgs have you heard fpga means it is also one chip but it can be programmed and that language is something different that languages are known as hardware description languages example is vsdl verilog etc so why you are using this because i am having an fpga I want to make this FPGA into an AND gate. So what you will do? Your microcontrollers can only do certain specific application. But this FPGA is something different. It can be programmed into any of the hardware. If the supporting peripherals are there. That means I need to make it into an AND gate. So what I will do? I will write one program in VSTL for making it into an AND gate. And I will burn into that. So after burning, it will be an AND gate. Sometimes I need to change the program. Again, I will reprogram that hardware. So there you will be writing something known as hardware description language programs. And for example, sometimes I need to make this FPGA into a microcontroller. So what you will do? I cannot write the complete code we cannot write. So what you will do? There are certain companies which are selling this code for making FPGA into a microcontroller. That codes are known as IP cores. IP core is nothing but one binary file, which when you are burning into FPGA, it will act as that. If you are having a ARM controller, ARM processor IP core, and you are trying to burn it into an FPGA. So after burning, that FPGA will be behaving as your ARM processor. That is meant by IP core. Then there are so many DSP based controllers. Next one, you need to see what are the different types of architectures, basic architectures. Have you heard about this Howard architecture and John one Newman architecture? So in the John one Newman architecture, what is the difference between Howard? There you can see the memory is combined, your program and data memory is combined into one and it is being connected to your CPU. But here in the Howard architecture you can see both data memory and the program memory is separated. So is there any advantage of separating these two? Is there any advantage? Why, why they are separating these two into two separate uh, uh, memories? Why they are separating? Because for example, in certain case, I need to take instruction as well as data at the same time. What they will do? In the John 1 Newman architecture, first instruction will be taken, then data will be taken or vice versa. It cannot be taken simultaneously. But here you can see data as well as program can be taken simultaneously that is one of the advantage of using this and another advantage is that here you can see 
both the data and the instruction bus are of size 8 bit both are of size 8 bit so it can take only 8 bit data as well as 8 bit instruction but here you can see your instruction is having different width that is 12 bit to 14 bit to 16 bit data will be of 8 bit so here instruction can be of all these bits depending upon the core that we will see later but this one will be fixed because for an 8 bit controller this will be always 8 so here you can have different width for program as well as data bus that is one another advantage then have you heard about CISC and RISC you had heard no most of the classes we will be hearing all these things reduced instruction set computer complex instruction set computer so from the name itself we can identify that this is something reduced and this is something complex so here you will be having less number of instruction here you will be having more number of instruction and another important feature is that here most of the instructions are of that is each of the instruction will execute in one clock cycle single cycle instructions most of the instructions are single cycle instruction in the case of risk that means in one clock it will execute except branching straight statements branching and control flow statements but in the case of CISC most of the instructions are taking more than one clock cycle why any reason is there have you heard about pipelining so because of that here in single clock cycle it is executing one instruction here so many cycles are required for completing that same instruction so these are the basic differences then why we are going to choose this pick what are some of the basic reasons so whether pick belongs to Howard or one new man architecture because in the last slide we had seen no? award is much more easier or it is uh, newer it is uh, most not most it is some of the uh, latest architecture so here you can see they use Howard architecture that is the first reason so that you can take instruction as well as data simultaneously when now required then they are coming under the category of risk so what will be the advantage from the programmers point of view what will be the advantage only less instructions are there instruction set is very smaller here we will be having only 35 instruction set but your 8086 is having if you are taking all the addressing mode it is greater than 100 around 200 it will be coming if you are taking all the addressing modes and here in the case of risk addressing mode also will be lesser here 8086 how many addressing modes are there so many addressing modes are there no? greater than 6 immediate implied so many other things are there but here only two addressing modes are there direct and indirect in the case of mostly in the case of risk there will be only two addressing mode direct and indirect direct means you will be directly taking something from the memory or writing something into a memory indirect addressing mode means what you will be indirectly writing into a memory how we will indirectly write into a memory by using in C how we will do that have you heard about certain uh, pointers pointers means it will be a variable containing an address of a particular location and we will be writing into that address through this pointer that is indirect addressing mode so in C you will be using the name pointer here you will be using some other name known as indirect register is there and the file select register all these things we will study in the theory class 
So two type of addressing modes are there here. Then next one is only 35 instructions. So that also comes under the category of risk. These are the two features of risk. So 35 instructions are there. Then executes in one clock cycle. We have discussed before. Next one is in circuit serial programming. That means there is two lines receive and transmit. So through that lines you can program. Only two lines are required for programming this. That is known as in circuit serial program. What is meant by in circuit? You need not, it is not required to remove the chip from that circuit. Usually what we will do, we will take the chip from that circuit, we will put it in one programmer, again we will place in the circuit. Here that also we can do, without that also we can do. So in circuit means you will keep the chip in that circuit itself and you will program that through two lines. That is ICSP. Next it is available in different packages. Your 8085, mostly it is available only in DIP package. But here pick it is available in so many type of packages. 10 pin package, 18 pin, 28 pin, 40, 60, 64, etc. From 10 pin it is available or from 8 pin it is available. So different packages are and how we will select this package size depending upon the number of peripherals we need. Whenever more peripherals are needed, pins will be more. So depending upon our application, I will be selecting this. Next, what are the features of PIC? What are the special features? First one is power on reset timer. So what is meant by this power on reset timer? POR, POR. What is meant by power on reset timer? Have you heard about that? That means you are going to give supply to your controller, say 5 volt. This is working on 5 volt supply. So whenever you are giving the supply, how will be the waveform? Whether it will be correct 5 volt or it will be increasing in certain fashion. It will be increasing like this, no? Or some noise will be there and it will be increasing and at last it will reach the stable state. And for your controller to work properly, your supply should be constant. It should not vary between certain larger limits. So at this, at this region, you can see your supply is varying or it is not at all stable. So what you will do? At this time, the pick should be kept in the reset stage. After the supply has been become stable, then only you need to start the working of the pick. So this much time it should be in the reset state or you should reset the controller. But I do not know what is the time required for this thing. So for that the manufacturers had included one peripheral known as power on reset. That means it will identify whenever the supply is becoming stable and at that time it will reset the controller. So from that instant only it will start the actual working. So that resetting on the of the controller is done by this power on reset timer peripheral. Second one you can see oscillator startup timer. So similar to power, what is a another important requirement of a controller to work? For example, I am having one controller. What are the two requirements for a controller to work? First is power supply. Second one is a clock because it is working on some digital logic. So most of the digital logic should give clock. So that clock is a second requirement, most important requirement. And usually in the lab how we will generate clock, some uh, clock pulses how we will create in the lab. Using your triple five timer you will be generating you know, a stable multi vibrator. Have you done that a stable multi vibrator? then you will do that and in the digital circuit also we will be giving some clock no? by pressing some button in the kit. So there also we are having one triple five which will be creating all this clock. 
but is there any problem with that? That will not be accurate. So here what we will be giving? We will be using something known as crystal oscillator. We will be using one component known as crystal oscillator, which can generate clock cycles of very accurate timing. For example, you are having 4 megahertz crystal oscillator. That means it will generate clocks of 4 megahertz. No need of doing an adjustment, but if you are using triple five, you need to adjust the resistor, capacitor, etc. Here you can buy that component and place it here. So it will be working on 4 megahertz. If it is 8 megahertz, it will be working on 8 megahertz. Inside that, inside that, how we will create these frequencies? Usually, how we will create? Have you heard of piezoelectric element? Have you seen that piezoelectric element? Have you seen buzzer? Open that buzzer, then you can see that piezoelectric element. So, similar to that, there is some crystals. So, how this crystal is creating this accurate frequency? How it will do? Because it is a whether it is an active or passive device, it is a passive device only. So, how it will create this frequency? For that, in the pick you are having one oscillator in and oscillator out to pin. So, what it is doing means pick will give some clock cycle through the oscillator 1, oscillator out to that crystal. So, whenever that crystal is receiving that uh, uh, clock, it will it can it will again vibrate, it will vibrate and create frequencies of 4 megahertz. It cannot generate by its own, it needs to get some input. So, that input will be given by your pick. So, when that crystal oscillator is getting that frequency from the pick, it will start vibrating and create your specified uh, oscillator output. And this range of oscillation depends upon the material and the oscillator which you are using. <coughs> so, in the case of oscillator also, there will be some noises and after some time only it will reach your stable oscillations. So, at that time also your controller should be kept in reset state until oscillations are becoming stable, it should be kept in the reset state. So, that is taken care of by oscillator startup timer. So, these are the two timers introduced for ensuring that your pick is working on correct accurate uh, uh, oscillations and power supply. Next one is wash stock timer. So, what is meant by this wash stock timer? Why you are using this wash stock timer? So, for example, you had designed some embedded device and it is somewhat critical in nature. Due to some error in my code or sometimes due to some other reason, your execution may be uh, uh, may get stopped or for example, have you heard about uh, infinite loop? infinite loop everybody is knowing. So, sometimes your program may get stuck in some loop and it is not coming out of that loop due to some error in the program or due to some hardware problem. So, what it should do? It should do. If it is waiting in that state, since it is a critical system, it will cause some damage. So, what you should do? For example, your uh, system is hanging, what you will do? You need to restart it. So, similarly here also it should automatically get out of this loop or it should get resetted. For that they had introduced a peripheral known as Vastok timer. So, there Vastok timer is nothing but an 8 bit timer and whenever this Vastok timer is enabled what it will do? It will start counting from 0 0, hexadecimal 0 0 then 0 1. So, in all the each of the clock cycle it will start incrementing and what is the highest 8 bit value? F of. After reaching F of what it will do? 
again it will go to 0 0 and this movement from maximum value to minimum value is known as rollover. So, whenever this rollover is happening it will this peripheral will reset your controller itself automatically your controller will be resetted by your watch dog timer whenever this rollover is happening. But then uh, there is a problem no? you are you are you, you are you are executing the program in the correct manner then also your watch dog timer is working. So, it will always get resetted no? if it has been logged in a loop or whether, whether it is working in a correct manner both the cases it will reset because you are doing some complex calculation at that time it is resetting then your all the complete result will be gone. So, what you will do? So, whenever your program is, is working in a com correct fashion this should not happen this resetting should not happen right no. So, how will prevent this reset from happening? How can you prevent the reset from happening? You should prevent this rollover right now whenever this rollover is happening it will reset the controller. So, in order to prevent that resetting you need to prevent this rollover. So, how will prevent this rollover? So, whenever the program is working fine you need to prevent this rollover. So, how will pre prevent? How can you prevent? Disable? No, watch dog timer cannot be disabled we can disable, but I, I have I am designing one critical system. So, in that system watch dog timer is enabled usually when we are writing the program we will disable that, but in a critical system it should be enabled because otherwise when uh, it is getting stuck somewhere it will not come out. No? So, watch dog timer is enabled then how we will stop this for that what you should do means before reaching this FF you should clear that timer right now whenever it is reaching ff rollover will happen so before reaching that rollover i am clearing that moving from ff to 00, zero rollover will be happening so before reaching ff i am clearing that timer itself watch dog timer so this rollover will not happen so before reaching this much cycle in each cycle it will increment before reaching this FF that timer itself should be cleared. So, how, how we will clear that timer? So, for that instruction is there CLR WDT clear watch dog timer that is the instruction used for clearing that watch dog timer itself. So, in between your code you need to include this statement also CLR WDT. So, in so many places you need to add this code if you are enabling watch dog timer if you are disabling then no need so we can enable as well as disable this thing so for preventing the re this resetting you need to clear that watch dog timer itself next this is one of the most important feature sinking and sourcing current 25 milliampere so what is meant by the sinking and sourcing current have you heard about it before Sinking means what? Sinking or sourcing means what? Sourcing current means current which this device can give or which this device can source to some other peripheral. That is a current given by this peripheral is known as sourcing current, right? No, source it is acting as a current source. Sinking current means what? Current taken by the device that is it is consuming certain it is taking some current and here it can take only 25 milliampere of take as well as give 25 milliampere of current. What is the sinking and sourcing current of 8051 anybody know that 8051 8051 have you heard about that it is having sinking and sourcing current 20 microampere. So, it is around 1000 times lesser lesser than this. So, what will be the disadvantage of that? For example, I need to blink one LED 
in the C, you are studying something known as Hello World program. No? Whenever you are starting C or any other language, you will be first doing Hello World program. So, what is meant by this Hello? Why you are doing this Hello World program? Whether it is simple, why, why you are doing it? Or after compiling this Hello World program, what you will understand? So, when you are successfully executing this Hello World program, it, it means that your editor is working fine. First one is your editor. Editor is working fine. So, that we were able to write the program and do all these things. Second one, your compiler or assembler is working fine. So, that you are able to compile or assemble your program. If it is assembly language, assembler. High level language, compiler. Third one, your linger is working fine. So, what is meant by this linger? It will link the object, what will be the output of your uh, uh, compilation? Have you said 8085 you have done, no? Or 8086 you have, have you done? 8086 in the lab. So, first you will give, you know, task some, some file name. What will be the output of that? You will be getting some object files, you know? After that you will be giving, you know, tlink that obj. So, why you are doing that? That means it will link your obj files with your C obj files, C compiler obj files. Because whenever you are giving uh, print of scan of etc., you need to see the output no, on the visual display unit, your uh, LCD monitor. So, for that displaying, the, your compiler is having some obj files. So, linking means you will link your obj file with all this system obj files. and Finally, what you will get? You will get an exe file. That will be your executable file. So, when you are running an hello world program, it means your editor, compiler, assembler, linker, all these things are working. So, that is in the case of a C, ordinary C program. So, here what is your hello world program in an embedded uh, system? What is your, what is equivalent to your hello world program? Here your blinking of LED is your hello world program, one blinking LED, that is your hello world program. So, whenever you are able to blink on LED, it means your editor is working, compiler is working, linker is working and after all these things you will get something known as dot hex file, dot hex file. There you will be getting dot exe file, in ordinary C or in the TASM also, you will be getting exe file. Here, you will be getting a file with dot hex extension. That means, that file will be having so many hexadecimal values. And that file you are progra programming into your hardware, burning into your controller. And there, you, you it will work accordingly, whether it is a blinking LED, etcetera. So, for example, in my blinking LED program, I need to connect one LED, you know. So, I will be connecting an LED to one of the pins of your controller and that connecting one LED can be done in two ways. This way you can connect that is from when you are writing one or giving 5 volt LED will glow. Here if you are writing 0 this LED will glow. So, this method is known as current sourcing method because from here your current will be flowing because this is the positive part. This is the current singing method of connection. That means from this VDD current will flow towards your controller. So, why you are putting this resistor here? Your uh, controller is, is working on 5 volt. That means it can give and take 5 volt supply, 5 volt voltage. So, why you are giving this resistor here? What, why, why in a circuit why you are giving a resistor? Reduce the current or voltage or both. So, basically resistors are used for limiting the current flow. So, how much current an LED is requiring? Ordinary 3 mm red LED. How much current is required for that LED to glow? 3rd year, no? 3rd year, 2nd year, 3rd year. 
the final year also sometimes they will not be answering how much current and led is required to glow ordinary 3 mm red led Two microampere, five microampere, ten milliampere, fifteen milliampere, twenty milliampere, one ampere. Or in whether it is in microampere, milliampere, ampere. Why it can't be microampere? That conception depends on the size of the LED. You had seen this small um, SMD LEDs, no? small leds uh, that will be consuming lesser current so usually 3 mm red led how much it is consuming ordinary led ordinary 3 mm 10 uh, red led will be consuming 10 milliampere current and depending upon the wavelength depending upon the color this ampere will be differing 15 milliampere 20 milliampere etc blue led have you seen no that will be consuming more power more current so ordinary red 6, 3 mm LED is consuming 10 milliampere. So how we, how we will design this? I should only allow 10 milliampere current through flow through, flow through this. It can give 25 milliampere. So I can directly connect through this resistor. If this was a 8051 controller, it can only supply 20 microampere. But this one needs 10 milliampere to glow. So what we will do? Yes, this thing can only give 20 microampere. This thing needs 10 milliampere. So it will not glow. So for making that glow, what you will do? That how we will give? That is, this will be giving small current. With that small current, I need to drive a larger current device. So, is there any method for doing that? So, basic method, how we will do? What is the basic method? So, you will be giving one transistor like this. Right, no? Wrong. You will be connecting one resistor, LED or some other device, and here you will be giving So here you will be you will be connecting one resistor and whichever device we need to control let it be one LED and here you are connecting it to ground and to this base you will be giving the supply let it be 8051 8051 and from a pin you will be passing it through a resistor for limiting the current then it is given to base of the transistor so here very little amount of current is required for switching on this so when this is switched on this vcc can flow through this path so this led will glow so by using smaller current you can drive some high current device that is the simplest method then you will be using depending upon the load you will be using relays something like that so many things are there so that is in the case of 8051 but here you are having 25 milliampere source so no need of all these things you can directly connect right no? so that is why that is the importance of sinking and sourcing current so you can directly connect all the other circuit can be removed no need of that then next one is flash programming next feature is flash program flash program means we, we can program that controller using simple 5 volt supply 5 volt supply using that 5 volt supply we can program in the olden days it was some other thing known as EP-ROM have you heard about that older versions of PIC it was using EP-ROM so how we will program what is meant by EP-ROM Traceable programmable readable memory. So, how will we erase? 
what is difference between e square p rom and simple e prom what is the difference so e square means electrically erasable so e p rom means what how will erase one is electrically erasable other one then how will erase is there any device for erasing that so there erasing will be done with the help of ultraviolet lights light so how will apply this ultraviolet light in your chip there will be one transparent window on this chip so in your 8085 kit you had seen in the lab no first year you are using one 8085 kit there some ics are with one sticker pasted on that one label will be there on certain ics some label will be there that ic is nothing but your ep rom that means they are covering that transparent window otherwise if some ultraviolet rays of uh, some wavelength is falling on it that program may get damaged that is why they are pasting on sticker so ultraviolet lights light will be flowing uh, will be given through this transparent window to that silicon inside that and for that you are having something known as uv erasers we will take that chip and place it in that eraser and it will take around 20 minutes to erase that chip so what will be the disadvantage whenever you are making some mistake in the program again you need to reprogram for each programming it will take around 20 minutes so your development time will be very large and any other disadvantage is there for a ultraviolet uh, programmer around 15 volt supply is required and since you are giving ultraviolet rays this heat radiations no this chip it will get heated up so only very, very less number of erase cycles are there around 1000 times only can be we can only erase that chip after that it will be damaged but when you are using that flash programming technique around 1 lakh times we will be getting that erase and programming cycle and there is no heat is there and within seconds we can erase and reprogram that is advantage of flash program next we will see what are the different pick cores because inside the pick i told no, there is one microprocessor and there are three different cores baseline mid range high end these are the three different core baseline means how will di- distinguish between these two i told no in the when you are connecting between cpu and your program memory you are having 12 bit 14 bit 16 bit size that is depend upon this baseline mid range and high end baseline it will be having 12 bit instruction width program bus 12 bit and it will be having around 33 instruction example is pick 12c series and 10 series 10 series and 12 series and this will be used for very small applications second one mid range this will be having 14 bit core around the define instruction and our microcontroller will comes under this category so it can be used for some more complex application so some more peripherals are there third one is high end that will be having 16 bit core 58 instruction and it will be pick 17 series so there are some dsp operations can also be done have you heard about mac unit mac multiply and accumulate that is one hardware unit that can simultaneously multiply as well as accumulate so what what are the basic operations of dsp what is the basic operation what are the basic operations of dsp multiplication addition and shifting these are the basic operations so here you are having a hardware mac unit multiply and accumulate it can be done simultaneously in this high end as well as and there is one more enhanced version of this high end sir so there some more instructions are there and 
18 series comes under this category, 18. There are more DSV operations can be done. And these are the application area, first baseline will be used for smaller application. Then for some more higher applications such as data acquisition, etc., we will be using mid-range. And for DSP operations and RTOS, real-time operating system, we will be using high-end. Then what is the size of the program memory of that PIC? Size of the program memory depends upon the series, whether it is high-end, mid-range, baseline. For different series of PIC, you are having different size and also width. Here you can see 512 bytes of 12 bit instruction. The width will be 12 bit, length will be 512 byte. That way. So it depends upon the different series of PIC. That is about programmable program memory, ROM. Program memory is nothing but ROM. Next one, what are the different types of program memory? I told you two types. One is CP ROM, other is flash. First one is CP ROM. So here it will be raised using some ultraviolet rays. Erase cycles are less. And around 13 volt it is requiring. More current also. Second one is flash. Can be easily erased. Around 100 K writes are there, around 1 lakh writes and erase cycles are possible. These are the types of ROM. Next one, what is the data memory? There is also two types of data memory. First one is RAM, that is volatile in nature. So RAM is, what, is, what are the RAM present in your controller? They are nothing but your registers, file registers. The file registers present in your PIC is RAM, nothing but your RAM. So there, data storage will be volatile. What do you mean by this volatile in nature? Volatile. Whenever you are switching off the power supply and restarting, contents will be lost. That is meant by volatile. And size of RAM also depends on different series, size of RAM also depends on that. Next one there is another storage memory that is E square P ROM that is non volatile in nature. For example, I need to, I am designing one security system. So I need to assign different passwords for different people. So where I will keep this password? This password should be kept in a memory which is non volatile. That is, after restarting, that password should not be gone. It should remain there. Then only whenever I am uh, entering some password, it will come back and give me the result or open the door or something. So your password should be stored in a memory where it is non-volatile in nature. For that, you are using this EPROM, E square PROM, electrically erasable program and readable memory. So that also is present in this controller. And most of, there are certain series of controllers having this. In the low, I told you, baseline controller, there EPROM will not be there. Most of the baseline controller, this controllers having this E, this 12C series comes under the category baseline. This basically, baseline controllers will not be having EPROM, but certain controllers are having EPROM. That will be having this symbol E. But most of the mid-range controllers are having EPROM. High end is also having. Next one about the speed of the processor. So in this processor, it can work on crystal oscillator as well as RC circuit. RC circuit means it can also work without the crystal. It can generate its own oscillations. But speed will be limited and it will not be accurate also. That is why we are giving crystal oscillators. And for example, I am giving 4 megahertz crystal to that controller, 4 megahertz clock I am giving. So what will be the actual frequency that is given to the CPU in the case of PIC? 
when we are giving 4 megahertz here you are having a divide by 4 circuitry inside the pick you are having a divide by 4 circuit inside pick that means whenever you are giving a clock that will be divided by 4 and the result will be given to a core so if you are giving 4 megahertz what it will do it will again divide by 4 so actually your cpu core will be getting 1 megahertz clock only so that what will be the execution time taken by one instruction 1 megahertz is a clock given to a core so what will be the time taken for executing one instruction 1 by 1 megahertz 1 microsecond 1 microsecond will be the time taken for one instruction to execute so for example i need to reduce this time so what you will do i will increase the clock frequency i will put some other crystal so for example i am giving 20 megahertz crystal so what will do 20 by 4 only 5 megahertz will get and 0 0.2 microsecond will be the time taken for one execution and can we put 100 megahertz crystal for that also there is a certain limitation from dc to 20 megahertz crystal only that much crystals we can keep otherwise if we are going on increasing the speed the speed will increase no? so all the controllers are having certain limit for this frequency so here this mid range controllers can only take up to 20 megahertz so that is shown here 20 megahertz only can be taken then peripherals these are the peripherals first one is digital io pins because for connect why you are using these pins so pins are otherwise known as port collection of pins is known as port so why you, you need all these pins for interacting with your external world for example you need to connect some sensor some switch some led or some other peripheral for all these things we need to have certain pins that are known as digital io pins then adc should be required usart so all these are the peripherals so depending upon the pick which you are using number of peripherals will also be different then it is available in variety of packages it is available in 8 pin 18 pin 28 pin 44 pin 40 pin etc 60 pin 64 pin 100 200 etc it is available and it is available in dip package dual in line package and it is this uh, full form i forgot this is some more you have seen the first figure no it will be flat and we cannot insert into some uh, breadboard or some uh, pcb we cannot insert it will be soldered onto a board I, I forgot the actual name so different packages are available why it is available in different package why, why it is needed to have different package for different chip that depends upon the size and power consumption of the end device which you are going to create for example i want to create this thing and i am having only this much big chip so how we will fix here that cannot be done so depending upon the application and the power consumption also and now the size is reducing power also will reduce so depending upon that you will be deciding on this next one these are the commonly used picks in the mid range series so here you will be studying mid range series only these are some of the uh, comparisons between all these things so this you can go through again your comparisons so here you will be studying about this one pic 16 f 877a we will be studying about that that is mid range so this will be your pic 16 f 877a so what is meant by pic program peripheral interface controller what is meant by this 16 16 bit of how much bit controller is this this is only 8 bit controller so what is meant by this 16 so 16 bit shows the core family 
that means this comes under mid range what is this f f means flash memory what do you mean by this 877 so that is a series that depends and, and this series number depends on what all peripherals are there what is the size of the memory all these things depends upon the series so whenever the series is seri or the the series number is changing peripheral for the memory will keep on changing so this will be your total ah yes sir 